uh, my title is Why Sharing is More Valuable Than Shares. And um, I think as a father of now three small children, uh, I know only too well that, that sharing doesn't always come naturally to everyone. Um, but I also know that when my kids share, they have uh, far more fun uh, and our home is a much happier place. And as, the, as a parent, we also see the huge benefits of sharing ourselves directly. Uh, after our first children grew up a little bit, we thought we'd clear out our cupboards, gave everything away to friends and family. We decided not to sell it on eBay or, or keep it. Uh, so we gave it all away to friends and family. And then surprise, surprise, five years later, along pops and three, and we've got nothing. So we uh, phone up a few friends, and not only do we get everything back that we've given away, we get it back with extra. We had so many toys, so many clothes, so many things coming back in. It was quite amazing. And it really showed to me that if, you, if we had traded on eBay, we'd have had to retrade on eBay to get it back. If we kept it, we'd kept it, we'd gain nothing. But by sharing it, we not only got it back, but we got it back with interest. Um, which is why I think just sharing is so fantastic. Um, which is lucky, because uh, our planet is a very beautiful place, and it's uh, We have finite resources, and we have some huge problems right now with with exploding population, exploding consumption, and now mass migration across, across the planet. Um, we really need some, some solutions to this. I think this graph just shows something. Well, I came across it yesterday, and it, it kind of blew me away. Just the scale of growth of our global population. <coughs> this, is a, this is like, you don't often see this in anything. I mean, even Uber hasn't quite got this, this, this uh, growth line. Um, we've got to, do, to, to come up with some really quite clever solutions to these exponential problems we're facing. And I, the idea that we can trade our way out of it, and the old-fashioned way of trading and growing and buying and selling, I just don't think is, is real. Uh, this graph, again, I, I came across, I'd heard about the cycle, I knew about the cycle, I hadn't quite realised how defined it was, this seven and a half year cycle. We've got the first boom of the internet, internet boom, Lipshed, um founded in 1998, just at the, at the start of that. Seven and a half years later, we've got the whole housing boom, and seven and a half years later, we've got the whole global credit boom. And we right now are on the edge of what looks to me like a bit of a precipice. It could be that we can't simply print our way out of this, print money our way out of this, and we could be on the edge of a, of a big decline. If we are, then I really hope we learn the lessons from the last decline, because when this happened, I, I was so excited. You saw uh, things like transition towns happening all across the country. You saw communities studying share working together. Unfortunately, we came up with a solution a bit quick in terms of banking, and we started printing money, and we recovered very quickly. And I don't think we uh, managed to change society fast enough to, to get more sharing. I hope that if we do fall off, this time will be super exciting because I don't think we'll be able to print, print money and get our way out of it. So exponential problems need exponential solutions. Um, this is a classic growth line at the bottom. This is basically how LiftShare was um, uh, growing. Uh, we were growing at uh, 50,000 members uh, every year, year after year. We weren't exponential. Um, but we needed to start uh, finding some ex exponential solutions. So, the sharing revolution that we're now in, I believe not only needs it to be bigger than the industrial revolution to overcome some of these problems, but I think it absolutely has to be. I don't think we've got a choice. And why now? Well, what has happened now is uh, individuals are now empowered through the amazing connecting powers of mobile phones in your pockets, uh, awareness and spareness, Individuals are now the ones in power, and individuals, when they say actually what they want, they want personalised services, they want convenient services. The trouble with convenience, it comes at cost. Some convenient services cost more than less convenient services, and individuals are willing to share, share in order to reduce the cost of that convenience. So, taking Uber as an example, you've got Uber, Uber you can use an Uber pool. You're willing to sacrifice some of that personal convenience um, to share. So, so we've overcome in the last 10 years some amazing barriers, the te technological barriers, um, giving access to individuals, um, payments have become much easier, they're still not perfect for, for micropayments, and insurance has, has, has changed quite a lot. And people are aware it's much more fun to share. So as I see it, the two biggest opportunities in the sharing space are still in, in uh, transport and in, in travel and accommodation. Um, and Uber, as we, we've seen, they, what Uber's done, in my mind, they may not be all about sharing, but they've shown that if you give people what they want in their pocket in a really convenient, slick service, there's huge latent demand for services like that. Um, and since they've, they've been around, there's been a plethora of other amazing, um, fast-growing companies that are, are riding on the back of that and giving people the information they want. So 
A quick uh, background behind LiveShare. My job title is social entrepreneur and possibilist because I fundamentally believe that now any, pretty much any barrier, any uh, challenge that the human race is facing can be overcome through collaboration and sharing. Um, uh, and that's vastly been sped up by the amazing connecting powers of the internet and, and mobile phones. So this is, this is me back in, in 1998 uh, when I set up LiveShare. Um, LiveShare went live two weeks before Google. I'd been travelling around the world and hitchhiked all over the place and basically couldn't afford the train trip home. So I set up initially a notice board in the student union um, where anyone could post a, a journey saying where they're travelling to and from. That became very popular and I persuaded a, a gullible friend of mine to um, build me a, a uh, website to see if we could turn this notice board into a virtual notice board. Uh, and off we went around lots of universities to promote it. Uh, since then, it's, it's grown quite a lot. Um, and we are basically all about connecting drivers with empty seats with passengers looking for a lift. But we're a social enterprise on a mission to solve transport poverty. And transport poverty in the UK alone affects 20 million people. There are 20 million people who spend more, of their, more than 10% of their income on travel. And many of those people spend more on travel than they do on food. Travel is a really expensive and wasteful commodity, and we can do a lot to improve it. On the left here we have, well we've got some great examples here, we've got um, Gemma and Emma Louise. Um, Emma Louise had lost her driving licence due to a medical condition a few years back um, and she went on to live share matched up with Gemma and they've been sharing a car ever since and they're very good friends. Um, you've got uh, Rob in the middle who uh, is one of our uh, great case studies who, who they travel all the way from Manchester to London um, and they save about a thousand pounds each a year. Sometimes they have five of them in their car. They have a biscuit club where they taste biscuits every, every week. And, and rate them on how tasty they are and how crunchy they are, so they do all sorts of things to keep their selves going. Um, as a business, we learned early on that there wasn't really any money to be made in individual sharing stuff, because people would take it in turns. If you've got students travelling at weekends, someone may give someone a fiver, but they may take it in turns each weekend. Um, so we came across the business model of basically providing the software as a service model to uh, corporates. So we started taking LiftShare software, white labelling it for councils, uh, large employers, hospitals, universities. So they basically paid us a setup fee and a license fee to run them a LiftShare scheme. And all of those LiftShare schemes formed a network. So if an employer wanted to work with other employers and employees wanted to share cards with other employees in the area, they could all uh, share, which basically gave a huge amount of critical mass in a certain location. We currently work with about 760 major employers, mostly in the UK. Um, and it's, well, you measure employers and local authorities. And places like Heathrow, we've got about 12,000 people traveling in Heathrow. You've got, I mean, the average member has about 30 or 40 matches they can, they can share cars with. Um, so this is just one example of, a, of a, a client outside Birmingham. You can clearly see that if you promote it within a major employer, you have a huge critical mass of journeys and they can all share. And not only do these people share on the commute, they then start sharing at weekends. They share to football matches, to festivals. As a member of the LiveShare Network, you can put in any journey you want to wherever, wherever you want, and you're very likely to find matches on where you've got high densities of, of journeys that occur. So we've got the, the uh, B2B side. There's also a free public side that any individual can use anywhere in the UK or anywhere in the world. We don't promote LiveShare anywhere outside the UK for individuals, but, but anyone can, can sign up. It's in about five different languages, mainly translated by our members, um, but it works anywhere. And we've invested quite a lot in tech. One of the challenges as kind of a smaller startup in this space is a huge investment going in and user expectation of what a good website should look like or what an app should look like or what a, a, um, a, an iWatch app should look like has changed massively. So you now need to invest a lot in, in, in giving users what they're expecting. So in terms of, of uh, scaling, UK clearly is clear our focus but we've, we've, we've got a country. I thought just quickly I'd look at London to give you an example. So uh, in 2005, London had 25,000 black cabs and Uber wasn't around. In 2015, you've got 25,000 black cabs still because of licensing thing and 17,000 Uber drivers. In 2005, we had 1,000 Lyftshare drivers. In 2015, we had 16,000 Lyftshare drivers. So not as many as Uber, but then we haven't raised any money. So we haven't done badly for a small startup from Norwich, but we've still got a long way to go. And here are all of our start locations for members in London. Just to give you an idea, we don't re London isn't really our focus. Our focus is mainly ex-urban people trying to commute in and out of uh, cities or in between, in between towns. But you see, it, it even works in London. And this is UK 2002 and 2014. So clearly, pretty much every road in the UK now has a lift offer, mostly in the mornings and the evenings, but sometimes throughout the day too. 
Earlier I talked about uh, needing exponential solutions. The green line is a lift share membership growth. It's not exponential, it goes up pretty much. Now we're on about 75, 80,000 members every year. But the amazing thing is with sharing, once you hit critical mass, as we did when we hit about 250,000 members, suddenly the amount of sharing skyrockets. And so we are now, well this is, this is two years ago, 1 million or about 1.6 million um, share trips a month now, um, which is pretty high. So looking now more at the social side of sharing. Sharing typically happens to two individuals. It's normally peer-to-peer, -peer, but not all peer-to-peer -peer activity is sharing. Taking these examples, and here are um, just a few of the many thousands of examples that are out there, you try and group these different, different uh, examples into whether they're more social or fin financial. On the left-hand side, you have the purely social, gifting, swapping, moving to sharing, renting, trading. On the left, um, there are thousands of these. On the right, there are a few. Mostly uh, highly funded. Most of us have heard of the ones on the right. Both doing amazing things. The amount of innovation, media interest, um, and growth on the right is faster. On the left, slower, but huge value over here. Is it a bad thing? Maybe, maybe not. On the right-hand side, PwC said uh, it was going to grow to 9 billion by 2025. That's a lot of, but from a standing start, that's not bad. But as I see it, on the left hand side, the voluntary society, the social society, this, according to the Chief Economist of the Bank of England, is already worth between 100 and 200 billion pounds to the UK economy. But it doesn't get any media interest, it doesn't get any hype, it doesn't get anything, it just happens. It's hugely valuable, but imagine if we can take some of the lessons learned, some of the strategies, some of the innovation from one side and bring it into the other. Imagine if we start growing this side up. 20%, 50% a year. We can have huge societal, societal gains. Sharing lives always change, sharing always changes lives for the better whenever it occurs. If it has money involved, it sometimes changes it for better. If it's purely for free, it always does. Um, here's just one example of one of our members, Cara. She went on to live share uh, and unsuspectingly, within five minutes, found her live share partner. He's still her partner. They're married, they have two kids. Um, they have shared many more things in their lives than just that lift, but it just shows that, that when you start sharing, lots of other sharing keeps happening. And there's a but. We, over the years, the last 18 years, I've, I've kind of dallied in a few other enterprises. Lift share has been our core business. We've been going, we're 18 this summer, 750,000 members, 30 million share trips, more than that now, um, and we've never had a single instance negative instance on the network. It's amazing. Almost unbelievable. Carloco, another startup we did, which is a peer-to-peer -peer car rental scheme, um, much more about needing to be a marketplace, transactional, money-focused insurance, taking cut of every, every, everything. It was going for four months. We had 100 users. Within a week, we started having attempted fraud on the site. We had attempted insurance fraud, attempted uh, money fraud, all sorts of things happening. And I couldn't understand it. I thought these two would be very similar. They weren't. Pure sharing, nothing. Uh, marketplaces, you start having problems. The other thing uh, that's happened in the market is because there's been so much money pouring in, those who raise lots of money um, get a lot of attention, a huge amount of attention, and it detracts from, from all the voluntary, voluntary side going on. Investment is good. There's been huge amounts of, of investments in UX, in, in consumer acceptance of sharing, but it is a slight detriment to, to the rest of the, of the pure sharing economy. So, a few years ago, the sharing economy was definitely the little guy, fighting against this big monstrous beast, the corporate beast, the, the lazy, tardy, slow-moving, inefficient monster. But I'm nervous that the sharing economy itself is becoming a bit of a beast. Um, it's becoming slow, it's becoming very much about money rather than about sharing. And it's dominating the, 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 a lot of the, the media areas. I really hope that it can stay small and nimble and really start solving some of the society's problems. I just want to end by reiterating this, because I just find it amazing. The value of the volunteer economy in the UK is 100 to 200 billion pounds. Imagine, just imagine if we can take some of the growth, some of the strategy, some of the huge things we've learned from the marketplace side of the sharing economy and get it into here. In transport, imagine if we can revolutionize the way community buses work. You see all these buses driving around with one person in them. They're really inefficient. Councils spend a fortune on them. Imagine if we can get more people into those, without focusing on financial gain, but focusing on societal gain, because they will save money, more people will benefit, and they'll get a much better service. 
Because basically, it, all sharing, um, if, you, if you trade, you trade. If you share, it's the most rewarding thing you can do. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you.